Hello folks, I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking. Welcome to the shop. Y'all come on in and make yourself comfortable. Today, we're going to turn a keychain. Well, we're going to turn a whistle and make it into a keychain. Let's get started, okay? So here on the lathe, I've got a piece of Bacote pin blank chucked up. And we're going to go ahead and start out by making that round. And we'll start off with uh, a three-quarter inch roughing gouge. It up just a little bit. We'll go ahead and switch over to a three quarter inch skew and smooth that out a little bit. All right, now that we've got that done, we're going to take a small piece out here on the end and we're going to turn that down to about 5 sixteenths of an inch because 5 sixteenths of an inch is the size we need for the uh, part that's going to go in the end of the whistle. We need that size dowel. So we'll just work that down until we get close. Let's see how close we are there. We'll double check that measurement. Yeah, we still have just a little bit to go there. That may be real close. That's just about perfect right there. Now all we've got to do is bring the rest of this down. And I'm going to switch over to a parting tool. We're going to use it much like we would use a skew. I hope you folks can see exactly what I'm doing there. Basically, that's just a 1 8 inch skew for us when we use it like that. Now let's check our size here. Pretty good. Now that we've got that done, we'll take our uh, little saw here and we will cut that off. You know what? Let's do one thing before we cut that off. It's one of those things that seems like I forget every time and then I have to use a grinder. We're going to come in with a chisel. We're just going to put us a flat on this. Not, but about a quarter of the way through it. Okay. So that's, that's looking pretty good right there. And with it still on this, it's so much easier to do. Because on a small piece like that, trying to hold it on a sander, even with a pair of pliers, can be a little bit rough to do. Okay? So there's what we've got so far. And now we're going to work on this to make our whistle. I will set that piece back over there to the side. Go ahead and start the lathe up again. And basically what we're going to do at this point is we're going to come across here and we're just going to flatten that off. Once we get that done, we'll come in and make a little divot in the middle. 
That's to give our drill bit a little better start. Now we're going to take a 5 16 inch drill bit and we're going to drill up in there. And at this point we probably need to make some marks. An inch and a half deep with this drill bit. Let's go ahead and mark that all the way around. We want to mark an inch and a half on our drill bit as well. So we'll put a piece of tape there. That way we know when to stop drilling. Okay, let's slow this thing down. We don't need to be going so fast with the drilling process. When you're doing this, you got a Jacobs chuck in the tailstock. Hold on to that Jacobs chuck. Again, you're not in a big hurry. Go in a little bit, come back out. So we've got our hole drilled. We're going to put our cone center on the tailstock here. And we'll put that cone center right up in that hole that we drilled. And that'll kind of keep everything lined up. Now, one thing you don't want to do is get real rambunctious with how tight you make that. So one of the things about those little cone centers is they will, uh, they will split that wood out before you can even think about it. We know our hole goes to about here. This is going to be the big part of our whistle. We'll, tone it, we'll cone it down or angle it down here and put a little ball on this end and that'll be what's closest to the keychain. And this part here, well that's going to end up being our mouthpiece. So we're just going to bring that down. I'm going to go ahead and speed the lathe up. We had it slowed down for drilling and we really don't need that speed slowed down so much anymore. So I think that's about all we need there. Over here, I'm just going to make a series of little angle cuts. So that's angling down there. And on this end, we're just making a little ball, a little bead. Okay, so that gives you guys an idea of the shape we're going for. Let's go ahead and stop, and there's one more thing we need to do right here. Again, we're going to go back to our saw, and we're going to come right in here. We're going to come up about a half inch or so, and we're just going to make a cut straight down. Again, we're not going to go quite halfway in. 
we're going to come back and we're going to do another cut oh at about a 30 degree angle again doesn't have to be real precise here we're just going for somewhere around 30 degrees all right now we've got two things we need to do here number one we need to sand this smooth so we'll go ahead and do that and normally I will do that by wrapping some sandpaper around my straight edge and I'll show you exactly what I mean here and what we're going to do is just come in and act like we've got a file here and just smooth that out doesn't take a whole lot of sanding especially when you're using I think this is 100 grit here to get it smooth okay let's go to some 220 here we've got some 150 let's go ahead and we won't skip so much we'll do a little 150 Here's a little 220. Do the same thing with it. And let's go ahead and hit it with just a little bit of 322. I don't know if y'all can notice, but this skew cut is a whole lot smoother than that 320 cut. That's one of the nice things about using a skew and slicing that wood. It sure does make it smooth. Although this is looking pretty good. So what we need to do now is we're going to take and we're going to get some glue that little piece we made a while ago, we're going to slide it right up in here and glue it in place. Now, you want the front of that to be just even or just a hair past this right here. But uh, if you get it past, you don't want it to get there, get much past it. Okay, so we're just going to take some just plain old Tight Bond original wood glue. Take a little paint brush and just paint the inside of that with some wood glue. Now that we've got that done, we put just a tad of wood glue on this and we're going to slide that right up in there. Slid it right up in there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I've just picked up a piece of bark off the floor. And I'm going to wedge that right in there. What that's going to do is hold that in place until that wood glue dries. Folks, we're going to give this just a few minutes for that wood glue to set up. And then I'll be back. We'll finish it. We'll put the keychain, key ring on it. And I'll show you how it works. While we're waiting for the glue to dry, if you like what you're seeing, do me a favor, go down and click the uh, subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and most of all, click that notification bell so the next time that I put out a video, you get notified, that way you don't miss anything. Okay folks, so the glue's had about 20 minutes to set there. We'll go ahead and we'll finish turning this. I see a couple of spots we want to smooth out. We didn't get quite as nice a cove as I'd like to have. So we'll work on that. We'll finish our little bead up here in front and we'll go ahead and part it off, okay?
Okay. Now we're going to come in with our uh, 3 8 spindle gouge. I'm going to make this bead just a little bit smaller here. We're going to go ahead and take an opportunity to hit this with a little sandpaper. I believe we'll just start out with 220. Okay, let's come in with a little 320 here. We're going to have to give that a little bit more time to set up. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and put some finish on this part here. Let's use just a little bit of antique oil. Okay, so this is a piece of sponge off of a sponge brush that just, uh, you know, it got used. The top part of the sponge has not got anything on it, so no more space than we've got here to finish. I'm just going to use that to go ahead and put the finish on this. And that way I don't have to use a whole new brush. So we'll just let that set and soak in. Some of you may remember the ultra thin parting tool I made a while back. If you didn't see that video, you might want to go back and look at it. It's just made out of a steak knife. And it is absolutely perfect for what we're getting ready to do right here. And that is just come in and take this off. Because we are doing like really ultra thin cuts. Folks, here's the whistle. I'm going to take the sander and I'm going to sand this in just a bit. We'll go ahead and do that right now. Again, I'm not doing a whole lot of sanding there. Just enough to knock that tip off. We'll go ahead and dab just a little bit of finish there. Wipe it off, and I use a little pin vise to hold a little tiny drill bit. And if you take that pin vise and put it in a drill, now you can use that to drill right in the end of this to put your eye hook in. Now, the one thing I would caution you, this is a tiny little bit. It's easy enough to break. So you don't want to run it real fast and you don't want to pressure it. You put it in the center, you start it spinning, and you be patient. It's cutting, so don't press. Just let it cut on its own. Remember, it's a tiny little bit. It's not supposed to be drilling really fast. Stop every once in a while and check it. I've had people say, oh my God, that thing will break on you. Well, it will. If you put too much pressure on it, it will break on you. But if you just barely touch it, it will also cut this and do a good job on it and give you a nice little hole to start your uh, eyeball pin. Once we've got that done, we've got these, this eight pack of number 216 half inch eyes.
that's what they are 216 half inch eyes and I think that eight pack was a couple of dollars so they're not much you can order them off of Amazon for even less that those actually came from the big box store so we're just gonna thread that in there I'll take my little uh, dividers use that to hold it give me a little bit of leverage on that again threading it right on in there you see what you've got you've got a little whistle with an eye on the end of it these little rings I ordered them off of Amazon I don't know you get I think a hundred of them for a few bucks I'll go ahead and put the link to all this stuff down in the description and that way you folks can uh, see what I used Sometimes getting that started can be a little bit of a booger. Ring in. Key ring on it. Now we just got to see if the whistle blows. I'm not sure if our glue is set up yet. I'm going to try to pull this bark out. See if I can give you guys a, an example of the whistle. Let's see if it uh, makes a sound. That's pretty loud, folks. Once the glue sets up, I'll go ahead and smooth this end off, and we'll have us a keychain ready to go to the craft fair, give a family or friend. Whoever gets this, you know will enjoy it. Folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, but most of all, stay safe. Stay healthy and happy turning.